From time to time, I find myself browsing through DistroWatch, just being interested in the number of distributions that are out there. And from time to time, I discover a distro that just makes me pause and say, what the fuck is that distro? I've never heard of that distro before. When that happens, I make one of these videos, and you and I together, we install that distro, and we discover exactly what the f that distro is. And that's what we're going to do today. So today, we're going to be taking a look at a distro called Scepter Linux, S-E-P-T-O-R. Now, this is a very special Linux distribution from what I can tell. There's not a ton of stuff out there on it. They do have a website, which is better than some of the distros that I looked at on this series. Uh, they also have a wiki, but mostly that is just release notes. So there's not a ton of stuff here. Literally, the amount of documentation that describes exactly what Scepter is, is a paragraph long, which I'm going to read you right now. So this is their website, and as we can see, they are based on Debian, they run KDE Plasma, and they have Tor technologies. Now, we'll talk more about the Tor and the security stuff here in a second. But if we hit read more, it's going to scroll us down to this. This is exactly and only what they have told us what they are. Like, this is all you get. As far as I can tell. Now, there have been times where I've been wrong. Many times. As I continually tell you on this channel. I get things wrong and I miss things. If there's more to their description than this, I haven't found it. I'll show you their wiki in a minute and maybe we'll discover together something that's a little bit different. But... This is what we know. Scepter Linux is an operating system that provides users with a perfect computing environment for surfing the internet anonymously. Scepter provides users with a stable and reliable distribution that is based on Debian GNU slash Linux and works on a wide range of computers. Distribution featuring a customized KDE Plasma desktop and Tor technologies. And then it has a list of the things that we can expect on the ISO. Now, from what I've been able to suss out, if you will, this is a live environment. It's meant to be it's meant to be used in a live environment and is not meant to be installed on hardware. Something similar to like tails or cubes. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at this. We're not gonna actually install it because there's no installer from what I could tell. But we're gonna take a look at the live environment and see what it's all about. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the wiki because we we know wikis are always very informative. So as far as I can tell, again, all this does is link to the description of the apps that is that it has included. So this stuff, like uh, for example, KDE Plasma 5. This is just a copy and pasted description of Plasma 5 as far as I can tell. And then we have the, sh the release notes. So we'll go to the most recent release, which was October or August 10th of this year. And these are the release notes. That's uh, yeah, that's it. There is a, there is a video here but that I have not watched. Uh, but it gives us the versions of all the new software. And it says it's been upgraded to Debian Bullseye uh, as of October 10th. Which, I might be wrong, but I think that was before Bullseye was actually official. But I might be wrong on that. I think that Bullseye came out in September. But, again, could be wrong on that. Time just flies when you're having fun, so I'm not sure. Anyway, so literally... That's all the documentation we have. That's all we know about Scepter Linux. Now, it may have come across that I'm judging them, but that's mostly just the tone that I use for these videos. But they don't, at least so far, have done a very... I don't think that they have done a very good job of telling us what their distribution is about. I actually got most of my information uh, on Scepter from this page here, which is on DistroWatch, which is just... I mean, it's a sad thing to say. Scepter is a Linux distribution which provides users with a pre-configured computing environment for surfing the internet anonymously. It is based on Debian's testing branch, and it uses uh, Privacy for privacy-enhanced proxy, together with the, the, the Tor and Anonymity Network to modify web page data and HTTP headers before the page is rendered by the browser. The distribution uses KDE Plasma as the preferred desktop environment, and it also includes the Tor browser and Onion Share for anonymous file sharing. So, that's all we know. Enough bitching about the lack of documentation. Let's go ahead and see what this thing is all about. So, I have a virtual machine here all set up to go. Now, I've been using this one here for a little while. I have looked at this a little bit because I wanted to make sure 
that this was a, a distribution that would fit in with the series, but needless to say, we're making the video. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I, first I need to go through and actually change the graphics display driver because from the little bit I used it, the default disp display driver for VirtualBox did not work. Like it loaded up, but I was having problems with it getting full screen. It was a mess. So, oh, hey, you wanna? Here's something I need to see. It says there's an install option here. We're installing. I didn't even see that earlier. We're gonna see if we can install it. Here we go. So this is, looks like uh, something similar to the, the the Debian installer, just a little bit kind of. Also, Void Linux I think has something like this. This is, a, this is an N cursors installer. So we're gonna choose English. United States is fine. American English is fine. So here we go here. So we're doing some stuff. This is going to be completely unplanned because I did not see that install option before. I just lo loaded it in the live environment. I was under the impression that it was just for live environments. But apparently I was wrong. So we're going to install this thing and see how it goes. We're doing a lot of different stuff here. Let's see how it goes. Um, okay, so you need to set a password for root. A good password. The root user should not be an empty password. If you leave this empty, the root account will be disabled, and the system initial user account will be given the problem. That's what I want it to do. Okay. We want the regular user to have pseudo privileges. So, please enter the same root password again, so we're just going to hit continue. Okay. A user account will be created. It's weird that they do the user account first thing first, but okay. So, full name for the new user. Matt. Continue. Username for your account. Continue. Choose a password for the new user. Now we're going to choose a very hard password to guess. And then we'll continue. And then it's going to ask us to do it again, probably. Yep. Continue. Now we're going getting the time for the network time server. Okay, so it did select Eastern, which is good. It's exactly where we need to be. Okay, so now we're going to do the partitioning. So, anyways, uh, let's see. The installer can guide you through the partitioning, through partitioning a disk using different standard schemes, or if you prefer, you can do it manually. With with guided partitioning, you will still have a chance later to review and customize the results. If you choose guided partitioning for an entire disk, you will next be asked which disk should be used. So we're going to use guided, use the entire disk, and that's the right disk because that's the only one in the virtual box. Partitioning scheme. So all files in one partition recommended for new users or separate home partition or separate home var and temp partition. So we're just going to put them all in one. That's not usually the way I usually do it, but this is fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish partitioning and write changes to disk. So that's a nice little partition thing. Sometimes with these, these um, and curses installers, you have to kind of do your own thing. Sometimes you even have to enter like F disk or CF disk in order to do the partitioning. So it's nice that this actually does it for you. So that's nice. Uh, write the changes to disk. Yes. Here we go. Uh, unlike the other videos where I was very persistent in trying to get this installed, if this doesn't install, I will just scrap it and we'll go look at the live environment, which is what I was planning on doing anyway. So I'm going to cut this away and I will come back when it gets to the next step. Okay, we've gotten to the next step. This, it says, it seems that this new installation is the only operating system on this computer. If so, it should be safe to install the Grub bootloader to your primary drive. If your computer has other operating systems that the installer failed to detect, this will make the operating system temporarily unbootable. So we just go ahead and hit yes. And then we'll use the same disk and then we'll see how this goes. Okay, it says installation is complete. So it is time to boot to, into your new system. Make sure to remove the installation media so that you can boot into the new system rather than restarting the installation. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue. And it should reboot here. Okay, here we are. We have loaded into the system. I am actually quite shocked that that worked. Usually I have the hardest of times with the Ancursus installers. They don't like me for whatever reason. Every time I try one of those things, they just break. And... I don't blame them, I blame me. It's obviously I do something wrong, but this time it worked. So we're gonna enter our password here and hit enter, and we have the traditional KDE splash screen coming up. And here we are. We are in Scepter Linux. Now, first impressions, which aren't really first impressions because I used it earlier, but uh, my impressions of the desktop and the layout is that it is okay. 
Uh, I'm going to show you a few things that I like, a few things that I don't like. And uh, the wallpaper is um, interesting. It is custom made, so kudos for that. They didn't just use a stock wallpaper. Uh, I would change it, though, because I don't like that color. Anyways, uh, going into the menu here, we're going to go ahead and first we're going to open up a terminal. So first we'll go uh, Control-Alt-T. And that does open up a terminal here. We'll just do first. We'll go to do NeoFetch, and we have oh, we got to resize this. So we can actually see the damn thing, and we'll do that again. All right. So we're this is running kernel 5.10.0. This is and it says 2,000 packages pre-installed. Now, don't be alarmed by that. This is a Debian-based distro. Debian distros always have way more packaging. It has something to do with the way they count packages. So, whereas you install Arch, you're going to have something like 700 out of the box. Uh, it's really, they're kind of the same. It just has to do with how they count the dependencies and stuff. So, this is using Bash 5.1. This is Plasma 5.20, which is, as far as I'm aware, pretty old at this point. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll look here in a minute, but I'm pretty sure that Plasma 5.20 is pretty old at this point. It might be the last LTS. Uh, this is the, it's using the Oxygen theme and the Scepter 2 Plasma theme, along with the Alufo, Alufold uh, icons, which I've never heard of before. So let, we've done that. Let's go ahead and see if HTOP is installed, which is not. So sudo apt update and, and sudo apt upgrade. Always and update your computer before you try to install something. Um, I, I have learned that the hard way before, so we'll go ahead and do this and see how long it takes to update. That's quite a lot of updates, but not surprising. Go ahead and, and because this ISO was released, I believe, in August. I might be wrong about that, but it has been quite a while, I believe. So we're just going to update this. Okay, that has been updated. Let me go ahead and do a sudo apt install htop here and then we can run htop so we can see here it's using about 723 megabytes of memory which is about normal for plasma it has 80 tasks 219 threads and it looks like xorg and console and stuff are the ones that are using the most in terms of cpu percentage right now which is again 100% normal because htop seems to take a little bit of memory so uh, as you can see the theme here is very breeze-esque but breeze circa plasma 4 if you will well, maybe plasma 3 i'm not sure at one point K kde Pla kde not kde plasma kde had these round buttons which were just fugly as all get out in my opinion so it's weird that they chose to basically just use plasma which is or excuse me they just chose to use breeze but they changed the window decorations. Not my cup of tea, but not anything you can't change. Anyways, we can go ahead and close that. And now we can go through and see some of the applications that are installed. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them because there are a ton of applications installed. The, again, that's what led me to believe, other than DistroWatch being, you know, DistroWatch, that this was for live environments only. Because a lot of times the live environment uh, distros include a lot of software out of the box because then you don't have to go through and install them. So, in terms of graphics, we have GIMP. We have uh, the whole LibreOffice suite is here. Ocular Spectacle for doing screenshots, K-Color Chooser. I'm pretty sure the entire Plasma stack is here as well because we have a whole bunch of K-apps. ones the, You know, the things that, are, that have K at the beginning of their name. Uh, so, let's go ahead and go back to all applications here the internet we have at hex chat kd connect onion share which is uh, i believe that that's the file the the net, the network file uh, sharing app for tor the tor network uh, qtox which is another tor client and we have the tor browser as the default browser we can go ahead and open up this now it said in the on the distro watch that they do special things to filter out particular parts of the internet in order to facilitate anonymity how that works i'm not exactly sure but i'm going to go ahead and hit connect here uh i have I have a, a, a very interesting confession right now i've never once in my life used tor like never so uh, i'm not going to be able to really tell you much about this i've never had an, um, a, a desire to actually learn about it uh, I will say that that responsiveness isn't all that great, but 
Uh, this is basically Firefox, as far as I know, but with like Uber privacy, you know, enabled, uh, and then you use it for privacy reasons. Uh, it has an ad blocker installed by default, which is nice. So, th yeah, that's Tor. I wonder what if we go down here and see. This is version. Uh, oh, we're getting an update. Ooh, okay. So this is version 10.5.4, based on Firefox 78. I'm pretty sure Tor is almost always based on the ESR. Uh, version but i might be wrong about that but anyways that's tor how that affects like let's just say we wanted to go to a great website i will that waiting for it to load our systems detected unusual traffic on your computer apparently it won't go to youtube possibly because this is tor I'm not sure. What if it just go to regular Google? Um, I'm assuming this is a Tor feature because Google's you know going to track you a lot. So, uh, but you know, this is more for me learning what Tor is about than probably what you guys are interested in because everybody out there probably knows what Tor is and how to use Tor. I don't know anything about it other than it exists. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that because I just assume that I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so there's nothing wrong there. I would probably just install Firefox. Uh, but then again, if you're using this, if, if you're using this, you're using it because you want those anonymity features. You're not going to be using it because you want to visit YouTube and Google and stuff like that. But I don't know. It, it's all going to depend on what your use case is. Because if you're downloading this, you want to use that Tor stuff and you're using it for a reason. Granted, they haven't done a very good job of explaining the features and the reason why you'd want to use their distro because they literally have one paragraph of a description on their website, which I seem to be coming back to again. All right, so let's go ahead. Multimedia here. We have Elsa, Eliza for the music player. We have VLC Office. We have all the LibreOffice suite here. We also have several of the uh, contact uh, K organizer and contact information for the KDE suite. The plasma suite is what I was looking for. That word that I was looking for. The words are hard. The words are just not flowing today. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> should, should have taken the day off like I was planning on doing, and then I wouldn't have to stumble over my words so much. Anyway, settings are just going to be the standard KDE settings stuff. Uh, we also have some Naptic package manager here for installing. Pack, uh, you know, applications and such, uh, utilities. Let's see here. We have a whole bunch of K stuff, like for the KD Plasma Suite, just like we expected. Uh, and then that's it, pretty much. So let's go ahead and take a look at the settings here, and we'll see. In terms of like themes, we just have regular breeze and the scepter theme. Uh, but you can go through and obviously add whatever themes you want. Uh, this is using the the breeze dark. Plasma style and the application style, which is also breeze, but the window decorations is uh, oxygen. That's the yeah. I'm pretty sure oxygen was a previous version for KDE. I'm almost positive. I remember that. I remember those because I did, highly disliked them because they're really I don't know they're skeuomorphic and I've never cared for that kind of thing. Anyways, stupid thing to critique. I mean, literally, there, Matt. You've changed it. Stop bitching about it. <laughs> seriously anyways this is just uh let's go down here to uh let's see if we actually i think kd plasma or kd um removed the system information out of the the settings panel so this is version uh 20.5.20.5 for plasma this is using the apps version does it, it used to tell you what apps kd plasma apps you were using but apparently that's not the case anymore. Uh, let's go ahead and open, go back to Tor here for a second and see what the latest... Oh, we got to connect again. Always connect automatically. Okay, latest KDE Plasma release. Because I don't actually remember what version KDE Plasma is on. I haven't used Plasma in ages. I used to, like, you know, follow that religiously. Like, ooh, new shiny new things. I will say that if you're going to use Tor, expect this to be really, really slow. I'm, But I'm positive that that's a Tor thing, not a, a problem with Scepter. But again, if you're using this, you're using it because you want to use Tor, and it's just uh, 
this this would this would be pretty much borderline unusable for me. I mean, I, I've now been sitting here for 30 minutes. Not 30 minutes. Hey, I've been waiting for 30 minutes for this to load. No, like 30 seconds. But still, that's that was quite a. And we still got to go to the page. 5.24. I'm. I think maybe. A few moments later. Okay. So it took a while for me to actually find that information. Apparently, they bury it a little bit. Uh, KDE Plasma 5.23 appears to be the latest. So this is a little old. But again, this is Debian, so it's not that surprising. But according to DistroWatch, it uses the testing version. According to their website, they're using Bullseye. So which one's true? I'm not actually sure. Because they can't both be true. So from this, I would say that they're using the stable branch. It's not the testing branch. Because if they were using the testing branch, I think that they would be at least up a couple more versions. I don't think they'd be the latest, but I think that they'd be up a little bit more than 5.20, which is several releases now old. So you don't use a Debian-based distro for the, the latest and greatest. So it's not that big of a deal, but you should just keep that in mind if you decide to use this. Now, overall, I think that this is probably better as a live like environment because as a like an installable distro i mean it's not bad it's not you know horrible or anything but i think that the merit of this distro is be is in that you would be able to take it with you and always be anonymous i think that that would is the way that it's probably intended to be used and there's nothing wrong with it it's fairly it's really surfaceable it uses kd plasma which which i really like it has reasonable applications installed it doesn't have a ton of duplicates which which i've seen a ton of distributions that are you know, for live environments do like they have just a ton of duplicates because they don't want you to have to download stuff every time you you know boot into the live environment so it this doesn't do that uh it's well does fairly well designed it has you know i we didn't look at the wallpapers but i mean i suppose we could do that here are the wallpapers that they have installed. Some Debian wallpapers. And that's, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, there we, we looked at the wallpapers. There's not really all that much more we could take from, from this. As I said, I'm positive that this would make more sense as a live environment. I don't know if it, will, it would allow you to install stuff on the live environment and then have it be persistent. I'm not sure if that has happened because, like I said, I'm not sure how this is supposed to be used because they don't have, do a very good job of explaining what it is other than it's supposed to be something that facilitates anonymity with the Tor thing. So if you are looking for a distribution that is uh, kind of built around Tor, because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of like under the ground things that they've built in to facilitate Tor being part of the operating system because uh, it seems to be their thing uh, that I just don't know about because like I said I don't know anything about Tor like zero things about Tor the way uh, you know uh, I know they talk about onions a lot but I couldn't tell you what that is uh, it's something that I'm gonna have to learn I should learn it I just have never taken the opportunity to do so so uh, that's for me to do and for me to improve myself on anyways that is it for this video uh, I don't have much more to say about it is it's yet another debian based distribution but it seems to be more they have their niche which seems to be focusing on people who desire anonymity how this compares to tails i couldn't tell you i've never used tails so maybe that's the next one i take a look at so that is it for this video if you would like to get in contact with me or you have thoughts on uh, on this particular distro you can leave those in the comments section below i love our conversations and love to get into it with people who disagree with me it's always fun if you want to get in contact with me on twitter you can do so at the linux cast you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linux cast before i go i'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons devon chris east coast web gen 2 is fun 2 patrick l primus marcus meglin jackson never tool steve a sit a mitchell art center amateus merrick camp joshua lee j dog and the bsd's rock Thanks everybody for watching, I'll see you next time.